Hello, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome to my craft studio here in Eagle, Idaho. Come on in for episode three of my Everyday Purse Builder series. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you how to alter the purse to make it wider or to make it skinnier to hold things that maybe extend past the length of the purse. So it's going to be really fun and it's kind of an easy way to put these purses together. So if you have the Everyday Purse Builder, you're going to want to stay tuned and check it out. Um, if you don't have it, I'll have a link below so you can go check it out. Um, it's a new product by Concord and Ninth and they have partnered with my friend Becky Roberts to bring her pattern into a die set. So I'm in love with it and I have some cute purses for you today. So let's get started. For the first purse, I'm going to be stamping a background using the To The Point Turnabout stamp set, and I'll also bring in the coordinating die set. Now this turnabout, you can ink with two different colors at each turn of your paper for a total of eight colors. I'm so excited to play with it. All right, so I have my turnabout jig and my alignment guide for this stamp set. Then I'll remove the turnabout set from its packaging, it's brand new, so it's super sticky. So give me a moment. There we go. Okay, so then we'll lay this down onto that alignment guide with the stamped side face down. Line it up with the pictures, and once it's lined up and the X's match on the alignment guide and the jig, you're gonna close the door of your stamping tool, stamp positioning tool, to pick up that stamp and remove the alignment guide. I'm putting some temporary adhesive on the back of a piece of cardstock that measures five and a half by four and a fourth and putting it into the guides on that turnabout jig. Now I'm going to use some Altenew ink. I'm using Red Sunset and Tropical Forest. Each of those collections have four colors in them. So the bottom half of this stamp is all the plants. So I'm gonna be stamping that with my green colors. The top half is the pots and little decorative elements. So I'm gonna use the reds on that half. Now this stamp has a lot of surface area that does not have images on it. Therefore, I wanna be really careful when I close the door and press down on the stamp so that I don't accidentally transfer some ink that may have gotten on that open space. And that also means that I'm going to be stamping this two times every turn. So you can see here, I just turned the jig. So now the number two is in the top right corner. I'm gonna clean my stamp off and ink with the next two colors. So a different shade of green and a different shade of red. This actually is more of a pink color. It's the lightest in that red sunset collection. And I am gonna stamp this twice every time, although for the speed of this video, I'm only showing you that I'm stamping it one time. And then I'll turn the jig so the threes in the top hand corner, clean my stamp off and ink it with another green and another red. So every time I'm stamping and turning, it's building this background. You can see some of the cactuses now have pots and also some of the cactuses and plants are gonna be multicolored, different shades of green. So I'll press that down, turn my jig, clean my stamp off, and bring in the last two colors. Now, if you're using greens and reds, you could start with your lightest green and your lightest red and move up to your darkest and not have to clean off in between, but I just like to be in the habit of cleaning off because sometimes I use multiple colors that aren't in the same color family. All right, so this is the last stamping right here, and you can see this really comes to life with those different colors, but because they're in the same color family, it's not too overwhelming. Uh, you can't really tell that it's actually eight different colors. So I stamped two of those because I'll need two panels to die cut my purse from. And now there's a, a open part in the center, but this stamp set not only has a turnabout, it also has some coordinating stamps. So I can stamp a cute little cactus right there in the middle to fill in that hole because I'm not using this to make a card. If I was, I could cover that up with a sentiment or a strip or something, but this is actually going to be on my purse and I need that spot filled in. So now I'm gonna stamp a flower on the top of the cactus and I'm just bringing in those same colors that I use to create 
create the background. It even has this little filler image that you can stamp around it. They're like little plus signs, really cute. So that finishes off the two backgrounds. I'm gonna go ahead and die cut my purse. This is the purse die right here. You can see it fits perfectly, exactly, onto a piece of cardstock that measures five and a half by four and a fourth. So I'm gonna make sure that's in line with the edges and go ahead and die cut both. Now I'm removing the adhesive from the back and then I'm gonna die cut all my accessories using some gold cardstock and this peaches and cream cardstock to match the colors in my purse. You can see I have all the things here ready to go. Now for this purse, normally you're gonna fold on all your crease lines to put it together and you're gonna glue the two flaps in the middle to each other. You're gonna put adhesive on the little end flaps of those side pieces and attach it, and that's how you normally put this purse together. But today we're altering it. So I'm gonna snip off these sides. I want the side of my purse to be completely open because the thing I'm putting in it is going to be longer than this purse is. It is also wider. Here you can see my Ferrero Rocher chocolates is wider than my purse. So when I adhere the bottom together, I'm not going to overlap it all the way. I'm gonna make it wider by leaving a little bit of space, widening it about a fourth of an inch. So you can widen yours however wide you need it to be based on what you're putting in it, just by deciding where you're gonna glue those two bottom pieces together. So now I'm gonna stick on, glue on all my accessory pieces. This gold cardstock that I'm using is leftover from a kit from Spellbinders, so it's gold on both sides. I found that it was very slippery and it really took a lot of time for the glue to dry on it. So I'm using these clips, but even when I use regular cardstock, I find the clips really handy so that you can stick one thing down, move to the next, and so on. So these are the jump rings. I find these a very clever die for this die set because once all said and done, you really only see the ring in the middle and it makes this purse handle really have a really finished look. So I'm adding the little leather accents and it glues right on top of the piece that's on the jump ring die. And then the purse handle is gonna go over the top part of that jump ring. So the, only the circle shows. And I find that so much easier than if we just had like a, a ring die that just cut out a tiny ring. It's a guide for you. It makes the ring not be such a tiny piece to handle. So I really love it. Here's my two handle pieces that I die cut and I just made them curvy using my crease tool. I also use this circle die from the set and some scraps of cardstock. I just free cut them. They're not gonna show so it doesn't really matter if they're perfect. So I didn't use a paper cutter, just some scissors. I'm gluing a circle to the end of each and then I'll flip them over and glue a circle to the back because they will be seen from the back. So that just gives it a finished off look to have the circles on both sides. And this is gonna give you that kind of clutch purse um, opening where you push the two circles away from each other to open up the purse. So cute. So you could put these on here and not even use the handles and just have a clutch look. Now, if you like the clutch look, you're gonna wanna make sure you check out episode two of the series where I showed you how to make a clutch with these um, using some fabulous textured cardstock from Tonic. So I'll put a link to that at the end of this video so you can check it out. But here you can see I'm gluing these on one to the front and one to the back. So they kind of um, replicate that look of those little round clasp pieces. All right, so I have to say, as you watch me glue on these handles, that um, Becky and I have been sharing ideas of what we're making with this purse. Um, my friend who designed this die set, and sh she had a candy bar sticking out of hers, and so I had also thought about what else I could put in this purse and how to alter it, and so um, her idea inspired these projects today. And I love the fact that you have the option to alter this and it gives you so many more options on how to use it. All right, so now while the handle is drying, I'm taking the coordinating die set with this to the point turnabout and creating a tag with these die cut cactus pieces. It's so very cute. I love that it has the little flowers you can stick on the ends of the cactus. It's really 
adorable. So I just um, found some coordinating cardstock that matched the colors in my purse, and then I'll glue those together to make a tag for it. And I'll come back and finish up these handles. I really had to let them dry on this gold paper. Normal gold mirrored cardstock, I do not have that much trouble like waiting for it to dry. All right, so I'm gonna glue the cactus into this pot, and I realized this is quite a large tag for this purse. So I brought in my scissors and trimmed the bottom of the pot to make it a little bit shorter. And that helped me get a little bit more manageable tag for this purse. I'm gonna pierce a hole in the top of the cactus and run some twine through it to attach it to the purse handle. This is some white twine that has like gold tinsel threaded through it. So I really liked that it had that little hint of gold in it to match the purse. I'm using a little piece of lightweight Velcro for the closure. I'm gonna put some glue dots on the bottom of my Ferrero Rocher so that it will um, take hold and sit securely in the bottom of my purse. And also it's only three glue dots so it'll be pretty easy for the recipient to be able to go ahead and remove that when it's time to eat them. So cute. All right, so we'll remove the backing from the other side of the Velcro, and then I'll remove the clips and I can press that together so that the Velcro sticks to the other side of the purse. It is so cute, I'm in love with it. All right, so now we'll go ahead and attach this tag with the twine. And then I am gonna bring in the Everyday Purse stamp set to add a little sentiment to my tag. I'm gonna be using that um, crimson ink that I used on the front of the purse to stamp this for you sentiment. And I'm gonna die cut it with the little tag die from the Everyday Purse Builder set because it fits it perfect, but I didn't want it to have the whole mechanism part at the top. So I snipped that off, added a foam square, and then attach that to the pot of the cactus for my tag. So fun, and that finishes off the purse that is wider, and we're gonna make a second purse now that is skinnier. So we're gonna be doing the same exact things, but I wanted to use up some of my pattern paper. I feel like this die set just screams to be used with pattern paper. So I'm using up some paper that I've had for a long time. If it's still available at the Spellbinder shop, I'll go ahead and link it below. And I am die cutting a partial purse from the same paper, it's just the back side, to make a two-toned purse here. So I die cut two of those so that it would give me that fun look of two different patterns on this purse. Again, I'm gonna cut off those end pieces because I want the purse to be open on the ends. The candy that I'm using is going to be longer than this purse, so I need to do that on my accent pieces as well as my base purse pieces. So once those are removed, I'm going to figure out how wide I need this to be by putting the candy bar in and marking it with a pencil. Then I'm gonna stack up my two purse pieces and bring in a paper cutter and just trim them off right where I marked with my pencil. I'm gonna use that purse as a guide to trim down my accent pieces so that the bottom of them is the same. I decided to go ahead and leave the flaps on the bottom of these accent pieces to make the bottom of this purse sturdier because it's not cardstock, it is patterned paper. I wanted it to be a little bit thicker on the bottom so it created a little bit more sturdiness. So I'll glue those onto the front of the purse pieces and there you can see my two-tone purse coming to life. Love that. And on the second piece as well. You could put a solid color of cardstock here too and that would look really good. It depends on how busy you like it. I'm not gonna lie, this is a little bit busy for me, but I do love that it's so matchy-matchy and that the inside of the purse matches the little pattern on the on the front side. All right, so there I'm just making sure it all fits well on with that candy bar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add all those accent pieces. I've cut from some mustard cardstock and some black cardstock 
and we'll just go ahead and put all those together, gluing them into place. Here you can see I'm finishing up with the jump rings. And then I'm going to add on the handles as well. Originally I was going to have the handles be that um, mustard colored paper, but it was just too busy. So I went ahead and had them match the little leather flaps at the bottom of the jump ring. I'm using the Everyday Purse stamp set to stamp this little tag and using the coordinating die to cut it out. I love this little stamp in the set that looks like a little brush stroke. So I'm stamping that with some honey drizzle ink twice without re-inking it to give a little color to this tag. The purse being so busy, I really wanted a simple tag for this. So this is perfect. I'm using that same twine with a little bit of gold um, mixed in with it. What is that? I want to say it's like threaded in there. Yeah, it's really cool twine. So we'll tie that onto the handle. And we are about done with this purse. But it was um, about this time that I'm realizing it just needs something. So I'm thinking about that while I'm putting this candy bar in with some glue dots. I put this on the back of the candy bar and then it will fit in the bottom but be stuck to the back of the purse. I'm going to add that Velcro in just as I did before. So there, the Velcro is stuck together. I peel off one side of the backing, then I peel off the other side and then close the purse so that each side will now have its own Velcro. All right, so here you can see I added a strip of black right above that second piece of cardstock or pattern paper and then I added a jewel um, where the closure would be just for some added accent and I feel like that really finished off this purse. So I would love to know which one is your favorite and if you have this die set, did you find this tutorial helpful on altering your everyday purse? All right, I will be back next Tuesday with another video featuring this stamp set so and die set <laughs> so make sure you tune back in. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and I will see you again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.